currently sitting at the place where the dinghy should be but there is a little bit of an issue with this boat or actually the design of it and that's the way it's rigged because I am sitting against the baby stay which is there to stay but which limits the length of the dinghy we can actually put here so we had a dinghy and that for sure does not fit where I'm sitting now so we are going to look for another one now I'm just finding the right size taking into consideration this space the width I would say if we would end up somewhere just in front of the anchor winch it should be fine that would make about two meters and then clearing the anchor winch is about 30-ish centimeters and then from that two meters we would have the transom of the dinghy go all the way to where the baby stay kind of starts so coincidentally my neighbor has exactly the same dinghy that I had uh, and here you see the length of it and I'm gonna do some measurements from the beginning all the way to the end and it measures three meter but interestingly enough as you can see here the tube is at three meters but the transom is actually right about here at 250 so that basically means there's about 50 centimeters less length in the dinghy than you would expect it because I think these tubes are sort of rather similar so that's a good start welcome back to another episode of sailing windrows I'm Jan and together with my wife and my son uh, I hope to set sail in about two and a half years for a round around the Atlantic or somewhere else have to see uh, preparing for that and one of the preparations is finding the right dinghy um, so already went over where to put it just want to show you some places where I'm not gonna put it so as you can see on the transom there's not a whole lot of space to put dinghy davids or it's actually quite a bit of work and I want to have a series drog here and I want to have a wind vane and I need to live raft to be somewhere so taking into account these three things I'm not sure this would be the best position and this would also not be a good position because you have the hatch over there but you also have the rod kicker over there which just gives a really small place and the life raft might be up here this we haven't decided yet and looking at the length here we are at 150 which is far from long enough and last but not least this is also not really an option 140 ish and then if you need to handle the lines which are underneath here it's gonna be pretty in the way so the only option actually is over there so all those options are no real options, uh, but I also knew that a short dinghy is not ideal. You preferably have something that is a little bit longer. Um, so I did do my research and coincidentally, uh, the magazine Zeile, my favorite magazine, uh, came up with uh, a comparison of all the different types of dinghies. Uh, they basically started looking at inflatable dinghies and they came uh, with seals on it. Uh, which actually is quite handy because then you don't need the outboard kayaks, uh, porta boats. Um, they also compared the wooden uh, build it your own, uh, but those obviously would have been too big. Um, and they even showed that you have them uh, in, in a way that you can make it in two halves and store it like that. The, the banana boat, the foldable dinghies, all actually quite interesting. Uh, and especially the foldable ones that I could store in the uh, on the side of the boat did make sense. But 
looking at the side of the boat uh, on one end I have the spinnaker boom uh, and on the other one I have the, um, gen the Genoa furler line um, and because it is a long keel boat it tends to drift off quite easily because it catches a lot of wind and adding just another sail to it on the side was not really my cup of tea. So I considered the inflatable kayak uh, but then again with the family that kind of is difficult with groceries and the dog and so in the end uh, we said okay let's buy an inflatable dinghy not too long and basically we looked on the local eBay and the perfect one uh, came by a zodiac of two and a half meters with the Yamaha four stroke four horsepower engine both used but in super good condition so after inflating it the first thing we did was try it out it's alive and it's actually quite fast <laughs> it's really fast <laughs> nice four horsepower is like a boat like two meters amazing we have a little bit of a uh, leakage but besides that the machine is running as it is supposed to be the most important thing was that it looks perfectly on front of the deck so it's a bit on the anchor winch uh, and obviously it is in the way of the cutter stay but because that is removable that's not really an issue the thing obviously i didn't like a lot was the fact that there was some leakage now this can be various things, but I actually wanted to get to the bottom of it. And my neighbor, Ignacio, is very experienced with servicing outboard engines, and he offered to help. I am here with... Ignacio. Ignacio. <laughs> and Ignacio is actually going to help me service... Ah! Yamaha four-stroke, four-horsepower thingy. Um, Ignacio, what's the plan, man? Right, so we're going to do a full service on the engine. We're going to remove the lower unit. We're gonna check the gearbox oil to make sure it's healthy. The lower unit, so for the lower unit, everything below the, the line. Exactly, it's also referred as the gearbox of the engine because this is where actually you select the gears. Uh, so you're gonna check that, make sure the, the oil is not milky. Uh, that will indicate that we have uh, water coming in, which is bad. We're gonna check the oil, the, sorry, the water pump. I'm gonna do the engine oil and we're gonna clean up the carburetor. And I don't know if spark plugs maybe? As well we can check i didn't buy them either we can check it if needs be we can get another time i'm super prepared i forgot the uh, <laughs> impeller i forgot the spark plugs or actually didn't buy them but um it's fine yeah first step i think is to uh, to see to get the lower unit off yep uh, i learned that this is the wet part and this is the dry part so we're going to check uh the impeller first right indeed okay so let's get started Ooh, what are we doing we're testing the linkage of the gearbox. Then we can, with that bolt, we can calibrate it, make sure it's nice. Dr. Yamaha, how is it? <laughs> what, what, what's your what's your diagnose here? Yeah, it looks good. Uh, but this is something we will need to make sure we put right when we reassemble. And you can see inside, maybe oh, it's all we're going to open it. We're going to remove this, ah. so we need to release that. Because this is the linkage between this and that. And then how do we know it's in the right position? Right, so when we put it back together, it's easy. This has three positions, down, which yeah. is reverse, middle, which is neutral, yeah. and then up, which is forwards. We just press that with our finger down, and we put this on the down position as well, and it should leave us in the right position. Okay. Right? Because they're both... Do I need the... to make uh, like a, a mark where no, it is? No, don't. Okay. I'll show you. Dead. Right, so we loose this up a little bit, maybe yeah. one or two turns, just enough so it's loose, but yeah. doesn't fall over. We don't want to disengage from the nut oh, from behind. Okay. So we just leave it like that. And now we proceed to actually loosen up the lower unit. So we have yeah. Yeah. See it. Then we have the how do you call this? The, the anode. Yeah. And then there's and one another there. one. Yeah. So and there's no um, gasket in between the no. lower. Oh, okay. No, that's... I'll show you why in a minute. That's funny. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Now you can see that this is separating. You mean this is gonna drop? Oh, this it's is gonna dropping very slowly. So, so the anode is actually staying in place? It's, it's sticking, exactly. And it's, it's just two bolts two. that you got out. That's it. Okay. Like my entire life is on two bolts here. Okay, okay so now we're going to lift the engine just a bit. And you want me to... Uh, yeah, there yeah. you go. And now we're going to remove the lower unit. So now it's not going because this is still too tight. So we're going to uh, loosen the, the bolt a little bit. So this is now... Wow. 
I need to bring you on board, man. <laughs> there you go. Oh, now I see. So the it's ah, yeah. so this is your drive shaft, as you can see. Okay. So this is when uh, where it locks to the engine. So this is your transmission, yeah. effectively. This is where the impeller is inside here. Ah. This actually looks very clean, very nice. Very clean. Yeah, yeah it looks good, very nice. Good, good, good. So this is where the water comes up from the water pump yeah. into this tube, yeah. which then goes through the engine to, ah, cool, to it off. cool it off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna remove the impeller now. Right. So this is the casing for the water pump. I'm gonna check the impeller. We remove the bolts holding yeah, the casing yeah, yeah, in place. Yeah. Now we're gonna wiggle this a little bit. That oh, actually oh, came off very not, easily. Not a lot of wiggling oh, there. Oh, that's interesting. So the impeller doesn't look too healthy. Okay, so the impeller is actually in there. So you see? So this is not the worst in the world. Uh, you can still use this, but it wouldn't re be recommended. So you want them to be like that. Yeah, because straight. then they apply pressure against the wall. So they seal against the wall. Now they're not sealing as much. Put it in. Yeah. Okay. So how you yeah, remove yeah, this yeah. is just slide it up. Just slide it up. So there is a dent in it. You can see there. Ah, uh, yeah, close So for for yeah, traction. That actually thing. makes sense because yeah. else it doesn't work. Actually, it just spins. So okay. So this is not too bad, but it needs replacement. Okay. So you can still use it. So we just got the cover plate off. There is some right. There is some gunk. Murky there. gunk in there. Yeah. Then we want to make sure it's all gone. And we want the, the water to flow freely. Here. All right, makes sense. So the this goes like this. So it's sucking water from this part. So yeah. this is half of it is being blocked now. So yeah. we're not getting the full flow that you could have. Yeah. So we're gonna address that. So we're gonna clean that up as well. So while Ignacio was cleaning up the uh, water inlet, I was uh, also uh, ordered to clean something up. I have to clean it uh, from uh, from you, from Ignacio. <laughs> <laughs> so cleaning it. So we're cleaning the anode, right? Anode. Sorry, yeah. Cleaning, <laughs> cleaning the anode. <laughs> we are cleaning the... The inside of the water pump. Yeah. All the um, canals, how do you call them, ducts, wherever the water is flowing through. Canals, just in Dutch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's keep the Amsterdam theme. All right. And now maybe do a little. Do you want a smaller? Um, Okay, right. It's just too, it's not yeah. that dirty actually. Yeah, no, it wasn't that bad. Right. So now we're gonna drain the oil, and what you're gonna do first is remove the the top bolt first, so you create an. a you have a bigger one, huh? Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, okay. okay. Hey guys. Hi man. Hey. It's the neighbor. <laughs> so we're gonna neighbor, make sure. Neighbor Chris. <laughs> yeah, so it gets gets some air. Exactly. So it it, it flows nicely. Yeah. Do we have to, ones to replace this? I think no. We, okay, we're gonna reuse. That it. looks milky. No, maybe. No. Let's see. Try. No, let's just not uh, jump to conclusions. It's still hope. This could be still be fine. So we want either oily oil, like oil color, or that looks good. That looks actually good. That looks a bit milky, maybe, but not sort of. Yeah. Well, how does that look? Uh, it doesn't. Looks there are newish. No, no, is, no teeth uh, from. Uh, no, that's true. So we want to look for parts of metal. Uh, but I don't see any, so that's a good sign. At least there is oil in it. But how are we going to get this back in there? Ah, that's the fun part. With this, this gadget. Oh, you we have, have a specific gadget to do that. Thingy. Yeah. So you actually inject it from the bottom and you wait for it to outflow here and that means it's full and then you put okay. this screw and then that creates a sort of, not vacuum, but... Um, yeah, enough. Yeah, enough to hold it in place. So to be sure the oil has the time to drip out of the small hole, uh, we started reassembling the uh, impeller, impeller house and everything uh, and onwards we went. We make sure the pin is there. Pin is in. The plate is, plate in is up. It's all cleaned up. We're all gonna, clean. We're gonna match this uh, yeah. thingy with the pin. Pinnetje moet in het gluifje. We say in Dutch. There you go. We're gonna put the old one in. Yes, don't start commenting. I am going to replace that, but you have so to buy it first. Yeah, nice that's all nice and, well. and clean and solved. So we're gonna put the gasket. Yes, that's an old gasket. We know, but it's It good enough. Replaced. It'll do. Yeah. So and now. When you put this on, you, need to you turn spin it. it clockwise to make sure 
Sorry, I have my hand on the prop, so you, oh, can't, yeah. you can't spin it. <laughs> <laughs> or you need to put it in neutral. Yes, so... That. That's reverse, that's neutral. That's forwards, actually. That's, that's neutral. neutral. Okay, so we spin it clockwise, and you will see that this falls very gently. And this needs to match the pins. On the gasket, and on the cover. Are you sure it's the right way around? No, actually it isn't. <laughs> It's a good thing but then the whole thing is end. the other way around. Yep. Also, the, the the thing's still on it now. Yep, but the good thing is we can spin it. Ah! Easily. So that we can do is like that. smart. We can do like that. And there, there you go. go. That it's all looks sitting nicely. That looks spins. good. Good. Okay. I'm going to do. In Dutch we say beter een uh, goede buurman dan een uh, verre vriend. Oké. Okay. It basically means uh, better uh, have a good neighbor than a far away friend. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> One of the questions that is important with gearbox oil is does it look milky or watery? Because then there might be a seal that's broken. Uh, in our case this was not the case. So after having it drained properly we refilled it again. So the way you do this, uh, you make sure you you remove this bolt so the air can come out now. We're gonna press this against the, the hole and we're gonna push the oil up and you want to see the oil starting to leak, not too much, but just starting to leak. And then you put this bolt in that creates a sort of vacuum inside so that will hold the oil enough for you to very quickly put the uh, bottom screw and that will seal the yeah, and in this case we're gonna turn it upside down to we can always we do could. that that's actually a very smart idea yeah <laughs> why it's not doing like that so yeah all right okay well let's go let's go we're ready oh i'm gonna do this you're gonna do okay, it good so put pressure on it just a little bit go slowly i want to see it coming out there Yeah, Whoa. that's enough. That's good. So we're gonna lock it in place. And now, because we have the lower unit off, we're gonna take advantage of that and remove that. It got stuck on the, on the thread. And we're gonna use gravity. Put a bit more in or not? Um, does it need room or does it need, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like full, full, yeah, right? It's okay. Full, so it's just, just you know. I have some left actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's a generic pack, it's not specific okay. for this engine, so. Okay. So now you put. This is teamwork, man. Yeah, indeed. Just a little pressure to seal it. This one as well. And that's our gearbox oil. Done. Mm. That was actually easy. Yeah, it is. That was easy. Oh, yeah. So we need to make sure that this pipe, little pipe here, I don't know if you can see that. No, but uh, uh, there is a little pipe there, boys a and girls. Pipe. Yeah, it's, it's an irony kind of thingy. Yeah, loose. So that should fit uh, yeah, in there. In there. So this is where the water is coming yeah. towards the engine. And this one needs to be in the, with the thing we uh, unbolted. Exactly. So we're going to first insert the drive shaft in the hole. So this could be quite finicky, actually, like that. I know what Yamaha was thinking, but this took four hands, <laughs> blood, sweat and tears. So it was yes. very easy, but in the end it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it was a learning experience. It <laughs> was what, for sure a learning experience. That's yeah. what matters. So we just uh, tightened that one and now we're going to check it. Correct. So we are making sure that the gears are all this correct. Is, uh, this is spinning freely. Spinning freely. So that should be first gear. So then it's incorrect. So this is a good example. So we're going to fix that. <laughs> so we're going to put it in Three. Re reverse, which is there. Oh, we're so gonna now it's... Yeah, we're going to loosen this up. Ah, we're going to adjust it. We're going to adjust it indeed. So now we push this down, all the way down. There. And now it's in reverse. So now we tighten this up again. Yeah, so that's reverse. 
Let's reverse. So it's, it's locked. Yeah. So that's now neutral. That's open. And that's forwards. Now it's locked as well. So I thought the gearbox was actually super interesting. Uh, after this service, we went on to the engine. And engines I kind of know, but I had never cleaned a carburetor before. What are we going to do now? We're going to move on to the carburetor, which is probably the most gunky. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, the, the, the thing that will change the feel of the engine the most. Uh, What's the carburetor? carburetor? It actually puts the fuel and the air mix in. So exactly. the air is on this side and the fuel is on this side. Exactly. And then it goes into the one cylinder thingy that's down there. Exactly. So we're going to get this off. Indeed. So it creates, it maintains the rate as you accelerate, which is very important as well. The rate of fuel and air, the, the mixture. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay, what did we just do? We just so, so this is at the bottom of the curb. Yeah, this is the fuel carburetor. reservoir, and we yeah. have the float in there. Yeah, uh, we removed the screw to empty it up. Uh, we disconnected the fuel line coming from yeah. the fuel pump. Yeah, uh, and now we're going to remove the accelerator or the throttle cable. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to remove the airbox, which is this okay. thingy. Yeah, um, so which is uh, uh, we have the gas return light uh, line. Sorry, so the gases come back to the carburetor. Uh, we're gonna release this guy. Sorry. Which is a plastic thingy. Like that. Okay. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Yes. And uh, I think we have. Cable. Oh, we have this little. Uh, we have this little. I think this is a oh, choke. This is a choke. Oh, sorry. Ooh, watch your yes. feet. <laughs> there. Sorry. There. And it's off. Yeah. Okay. So we remove the covers yeah. from the bolts. So you wanna put that safely somewhere? One. And oh. Oh. two. We're dropping I already smell gasoline. That's yes, good. That's good. Let me make sure this is all the way off. Yeah, we can get it out. No uh, ringetjes. Yes, there is one. There is one there. There it is. There you go. Okay. Ah, uh, so it's actually in the. So we call this in Dutch a spruitstuk. How do you, do you uh, the manifold. Manifold. So it's in the manifold and it just goes straight through. Yes. So this is already off. So we're going to take the carburetor off. There you go. Ta-da. Ta That's a carburetor. And it's dirty. It is very dirty. It's on the, on the inside. It's not there. Oh, it's leaking. It's leaking, yeah. So we're going to be very careful with that. We don't want to contaminate the water. Well, there is. A, we're not contaminating anything, boys and girls. Don't worry about it, <laughs> except for ourselves. But we're being very careful. And okay. we're having white shorts here, so yes. we would contaminate <laughs> anything. You would definitely see that. Exactly. So the idea of cleaning the carburetor with an ultrasonic bath uh, meant that we had to take the whole bloody thing apart fully. Okay. For surprise number one, is there a gunk in the? Yeah. How do you call that thing? The uh, fuel reservoir. Fuel reservoir. So and you can see there in the bottom. Too it's, bad. it's not horrible, but there's some there. And this is the most important part. So this is the jet. Yeah. That actually goes to the Venturi. Yeah. Uh, and this is where the fuel goes through. Yeah. This usually gets uh, stuck or, or you know clogged with with bad fuel or old yeah, fuel. Yeah. And this is the main. Uh, issue that you will have when you have no enough throttle, or it will hesitate when you when you yeah, throttle yeah, up. Yeah, because it just it, you have not it yeah. doesn't have enough fuel. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, running yeah, too yeah. lean, which is also yeah. not good for your engine temperature. You just got that, out the main, main jet. jet, and if you see that will be quite difficult to see actually. Yeah, but it's it's probably a bit blocked. Yeah, and in Dutch we would say it's a tail Exactly. So now we're gonna remove that thingy. Yeah, I forgot the name. We on the, on when we had a moped, we would actually uh, make it bigger. Board, yeah, yeah, bigger ones. <laughs> of course, ah. I would do the same. All right, I think we are ready to go. So yes. what do we we need? What do we have? Actually, you. What did you do? We remove all the non-metal parts from the car, so the product that we're going to use doesn't spoil anything, uh, and we're ready to drop everything in the machine. So we're going to have a solution with mostly water, and a five percent of a product. That we can maybe show yeah uh, that is here which is specific for carburetor cleaning take yeah. a pour yes and it's german so it works exactly so that's good <laughs> okay. we have the needle so we put all the small parts in there that we want to clean yeah so all the put jets and everything we throw in here yeah in here you're right you could also put your fries in there exactly put that one in there and there we go first 500 centiliters yes this is the first time I put water in my car carburetor. <laughs> right? I mean, that feels so don't weird. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. There you 
go. And now 75% of the uh, very toxic. Do we need to wear a mask or something? We need to get out. We're gonna get what? We need to get out. Why is that? Because it needs to be in a ventilated environment. Oh. Let's open the doors. <laughs> we're gonna add the fluid, but in the meantime, oh, yeah. we're gonna heat up the water. How many degrees? I use 50 degrees. Oh, it's not 5,000, unfortunately. That's good. No, that's, that's the actual temperature. And this oh, is okay. The, the target ah, temperature. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're gonna start heating the water. Okay. Yeah. It's heating the water. So that should go up. This what is, actually is this? This is a digital ultrasonic cleaner. That's right. It's an Amazon Chinese product that actually works really well. I only use it once, to be fair. Uh, but so far. So if it explodes, I might have an issue here. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You have a fire extinguisher, mm. right? <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I have one that's tested six years ago. I well, think. It doesn't have a fuse on it, so that gives oh, me some hope. Okay, so it doesn't so, blow the fuse here. Yeah, exactly. So it should be fine. Uh, yeah, it's actually... So it's, but what is it? So it, it vibrates? So it, it blasts the uh, the flu or, or, or the, the, the parts through the fluid uh, with ultrasonic uh, frequency, which is somewhere here, some kilohertz. Good. Uh, I forgot the value. Five hundred. Uh, yeah. So and with in you know um, in combination with the product, like it's the supposed to yeah, it's supposed to break the molecules of fuel, oil, and anything oily, uh, and it should it's supposed to dissolve everything. Oh, oh sorry. It's in. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> so now we put the product there. Good. Okay. So we put the lid on, and now prepare for a very loud, annoying sound. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just. Okay, nearly fried the microphone there. Anyway, um, that had to take a bath for 20 minutes, and we figured in the meantime we could nicely continue with the engine service. We're going to change the engine oil, which is the easier job of the day, hopefully. <laughs> so we're going to remove the oil cap. So again, the air is able to go in. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So make sure you don't lose that. We clean it up a bit. Okay. The bolt okay. is up there. Up there on the engine block. It's a 12 mil. That's gonna be quite a bit of a mess. Yes. So we're going to. Yes. Because this is uh, probably here is a good location. I think it's gonna catch most of it. Okay. So... Ooh, that was. That wasn't too bad. That was a sweet spot, man. <laughs> that was like spot on. And this engine oil also looks. Looks pretty good, yeah. Not pretty too good. old. Well, to be honest, we ran it like four times, so I think it was new in there anyway. Yeah. So we have both oils out. So now we're going to put the bolt back in. We're going to put the oil in. Yep. So we put the bolt back again. In. Uh, we make sure the, all the oil is out. And so then we're going to put half a liter of, uh, as you can see there, engine oil, 0 0.5 liter. So we're going to top it up. And yes, Avian, this was your bottle. Yes. So thank you for that. Okay. Perfect. Perfect, man. So, for this update, we have new oil. Oil is in. Measured and proper level. Oh, by the way, what? Very good tip. Yes. If you put a dipstick in, don't turn it in, just put it on the thread. Yes, indeed. We checked so it on the internet. So, if you, you unscrew if the internet it, is wrong. unscrew it, you wipe it, and then you just put it there without screwing again, and then just you dip. measure correctly. So yeah. we had to put in a little bit of extra oil. I think yes. we put in 600, right? Yes, indeed. So instead of 500. So it's a 20% mils. extra. Yeah. So yeah, we should be good to go. Yeah, and the 10 minute job turned out to be three hours. It was fun though. Two and a half hours, it's fun. <laughs> so we're gonna finish it off tomorrow. Yes. Uh, for now, we're gonna get the metals out of the box. So let's have a look at how clean it became. Yes. All right, so All we're right. gonna get it out. We, we now two. have a safety net. So maybe we should do some dripping. Good. Probably shouldn't be breathing this. All right, look at that. Wow. But yeah. Gee, that's. This is clean. A big difference. Yeah. Yeah, so some of those parts are in there now. Yeah, we're going to fish it I now. turned it over, which might not have been the hard. Uh, it's the thing there. to do. It's mostly gone. That looks good. It was turning rather late. Uh, and we agreed to assemble it the day after, but we did want to kind of blow it dry. Oh, your air screw, air, yes. air blowing air through. Oh, sorry about. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, man. Did it, did it get in here? No. Sorry. It's just yeah, it's right. Pointed somewhere else. 
Yeah. Ooh, look at that. So what do you think is the biggest difference after cleaning the carb? So right. what's so basically the rate of fuel and air will be correct. That means the, the engine will run as designed, as intended. So no no temperature issues, it will not mm. run very lean or very rich. Yeah. The spark plug will last a long time because it's not running too rich. It, it will work as it should. Also, it will be very responsive. So it will start very easily. It will idle very low and very stable. It won't go all all over the, the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it will feel like a new engine. Ooh. Yeah. So hopefully, <laughs> that's, hopefully. That, that's, that's the goal. <laughs> the proofs so. in the eating of the pudding, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. This time the proofs in the in the running of the engine. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, mostly you know it's peace of mind. You know that your engine is running as it should. So when Ignacia left her for home, uh, there was one thing uh, he advised me to do, and that was to replace the thermostat all looking nice and fiffy again replaced the anode replaced the thermostat and replaced the seal so at least the thermostat is now okay and the motor should not run too warm also clean this hard to see but it's clean so let's put this back together the day after obviously was the happy day we reassembled the uh, carburetor and uh, put everything back in. Um, how to do that? Fairly easy. It's the opposite way of getting it out. It's a good trick. You should try it. Uh, and after everything was put back together, it was time to put the engine on, in this case, the dinghy of Ignacio, because it was still inflated, and give it a try. Okay, this is fun. so the red cable is on. The cable is on. Open that's dinghy. open yeah. that i already opened okay this, yeah give it some pulls and then put the choke well you can try anyway put the choke anyway it's fine there's no fuel anyway so it's fine that was one This was not according to plan. It looks bone dry. Is it? Maybe yeah, I should. I so. This fuel is there, right? No fuel. Now there's fuel. Is there? Good, huh? so before we go any further i want to thank you ignacio superman thank you so much for helping me with this and i really think that the people on youtube so you who are watching uh, this as well uh, might have an opinion on how you explained it i thought it was super clear so if you have a comment leave it below and uh, give a thumbs up for ignacio because uh, i really think this is a very thorough service and it worked very well uh, the interesting part is actually that in the end, the engine did not fit on the uh, on the transom. And the oil comes from the fact that you cannot put it on the side, not at one side at least, because then it leaks. And that is very inconvenient in my case. As Ignacio really loved these engines, in the end he bought it from me. And uh, after being six months in the shed, he tried it, uh, to run it. Um, and uh, this was the result. So this is the engine after service a year ago. I didn't got the fuel out, which Ignacio didn't like that much, but it's all fuel, all fuel, okay. but it still runs all idle right. without a choke. So Ta -da! good. So again, Ignacio, thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely time with that engine and it will serve you well. Um, this was the episode, a rather long episode, um, on the full service uh, and buying of the dinghy. And the next episode is actually a banger. 
It's where I and Sasha go out for a trip that takes a total different direction than I expected it to be taking. Not really for the better, so stay tuned and hit subscribe to watch the next episode of Sailing Windrose. Thank you boys and girls, see you later. So the same thing you do with this, but with an engine. With an engine. <laughs> well, this actually also has an engine. I know, I know, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't want to... This is a job. It's a hobby, but it's a job to this. go sailing. Sailing, yeah. yeah. No, sailing is like it's, the, it's a sport. the most expensive way to uh, travel for free. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that is true. It's really insane, actually. It doesn't make any true. sense at all.